Here we are at Miss Patty Story Time. Uh, who are you? What age group do you work with? Oh, hi, I'm Patty, and uh, generally work with infants and toddlers. Okay, so you're going to give us some story time techniques, but before we start, what what is it about story time for you? Why do you like it so much? Uh, I love story time with kids because it's uh, time to be fun and silly and... Uh, you know, you make those connections, and it's also a chance to share my love of story uh, telling and reading with the kids that I work with. Okay, so I'm going to put you on the spot. I want you to give me your five, top five ways of doing story time with kids. Are you ready? I think so. <laughs> okay, Patty, number five. What's your top five? Number five. Uh... Not in order of preference. So. No. Okay. Uh, stories with props. Okay. I love, and my kids love stories with props. So one of my favorite stories is The Napping House. Okay. And so we have our story, our story book. And because I have a terrible memory, so I can't do it by heart. Okay. <laughs> and then you have your props. And so I would start by taking my glasses off because I can't read with my glasses on. And we would get our book ready, and all the kids then helped me build the story with the props that we have uh, in our little prop bag. So, and they know the story really well. We read it over and over again, so they're, they know the order pretty much. So anyway, should I read a couple of pages? Yeah, just show, how does it work? Okay, so I would just read my story. <clears throat> I'm usually more organized than that. Okay. <laughs> but kids don't judge. <laughs> uh, there is a house, a napping house, where everyone is sleeping. And you open up the little house and there's your little bed. And in that house there is a bed, a cozy bed and a napping house where everyone is sleeping. And on that bed there is a granny. Maybe the kids would help me put the granny to bed. There is a granny, a snoring granny on a cozy bed in a napping house where everyone is sleeping. You like it, Miss Betty? And on that granny, there is a child. And then we just build the story from there with all the props. So does every kid get a, a little prop when you do that? Yeah, we just, you know, take turns and just to the fits and toddlers, they grab what they want. Okay, that's number five. Works with dogs too? Works with, and a cat, but he left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Patty, now this is number four. What's number four? Number four? Well, we have, I have a set of these little, like, peekaboo bags okay. with a set of props inside. And then we just would take the bags and make a silly little song and find the objects and talk about them and make up silly little rhymes and such. Some some people might be saying, what's this got to do with literature? But isn't this a little uh, Where's Waldo for uh, infants and Waldo. toddlers? Yeah, exactly. And it's what I would, I guess, would be like, you know, pre-storytelling stuff. Okay, let's, let's have a look at what's in that bag. Look so, at everything in the bag. There's probably 30 or 40 little objects in the bag. Can you bag. show that up to the camera? Oh, I don't yeah. know if you can see it. So there. each one of those little items could also elicit a little storytelling. It could be a story or a rhyme or, you know, you've got a frog. So you could, you know, do five green and speckled frogs or, you know, you just, I just kind of go with the kids uh, at what's happening at the moment and go with their cue sort of thing. Beautiful, that's number four. Okay, let's go to number three. Okay, now number three. Number three would be, uh, I love to do felt. Did board. you make this felt board yourself? This, per this felt yeah. board? No, we oh. bought. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> do I lose marks? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I did not make the board. Okay. But they're fairly easy to make. But I did make the felt board pieces, so don't judge. Okay. <laughs> uh, so my kids love felt board stories. So we have, for example, I have my pond. Okay. And my log. And you just uh, used old material for that, right? 
lot of the pieces I just use old material because I didn't. And what have... do you put on the back to make it stick? Actually, no material, just pretty okay. much sticks okay. to to felt. To be honest, uh, and then but some are felt pieces. And then you know I've got my classic five green and speckled frogs, and then we just do what the kids help the frogs jump into the water. Glub glub. Okay, so <laughs> that is. But oh yes, sir. Just like um, like for example, if you're not good at making your own felt board pieces, no judgment, because mm. you know all you have to do is like print them off and then put a little piece of felt on the back. So then I have. You know, like your very hungry caterpillar, which is just printed off, and then that sticks on your felt board. Beautiful, and you can also use sandpaper too. Oh, that's a good uh, idea. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, you know so that is number. I think that was three. That was number three. Okay, now we're coming up with number two. So here is number two. Number two would just be. Uh, I love puppets and so I have puppets all around the room I have puppets in my book area I have puppets in a puppet theater I have puppets beside the change table uh, so I try to do literacy you know wherever we are throughout our day and yes I do throw the puppets into the, the washing machine after we use them <laughs> I'm very sanitary uh, so yeah you, you know, you do your classic little hickory dickory docks or whatever. With what do you got there? I have a mouse. Okay. You know, so we just, you know, do rhymes, uh, songs. You know, the fox went out on a chilly night. That's, uh, you know, my fox one. Uh, we've got bringing home a baby bumblebee. I try to avoid the squishing up part, though, mm -hmm. but. Whatever. Do you also uh, make up stories with the kids? We make up stories, yeah, exactly. So whatever you grab. Whatever they grab. And then, you know what, you just have to uh, suspend your uh, being embarrassed and just be silly. You know, you can well, story up, making. It's story making, exactly. And just, you know, wanting to engage them and interest them and, you know, wanting to, you know, come back for more later on sort of thing. So I do puppets... A lot. Our, my kids love puppets. Okay, that's number two, and then we'll be with number one. And finally, we're with number one, and this is another props one, but using a different prop that people might not use with literature. Right. Well, my kids love pop-up books or books with, you know, puppets, whatever. So this book is a book, which is pretty a simple book. It's a silly little story. But it does have a puppet with it, so then the kids all get a turn to be the main character in the book. A swimming little fish who's trying to discover where the bubbles in the story is come or you know where they're coming from. So then throughout the book I blow bubbles. So Why do you blow bubbles? Because the kids love bubbles and it's a little under the sea. Who doesn't love bubbles and a little bit more, let's see what <laughs> So I so as you read it, you blow a couple of. Yeah, I blow bubbles, and it's all about bubbles. The story is all about bubbles, and then especially when we get to the very end, and it's all about you know this whale that's blowing bubbles. It's exciting. We found out who blew the bubbles. We pop the bubbles. We sing a stupid little song about bubbles. So you you basically take an element from the book and then turn it into something that you know kids like. Yeah, exactly. Making it an enriching literature experience. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, and so that just... that was the top five for Patty, and then I'm going to put her on the spot one more time. Patty, if you could read a book for kids, what's your favorite book, especially for infants and toddlers that you love reading? I think it doesn't matter what my favorite book is, but what their favorite book is. Okay, okay, that's that's very fair. Uh, again, Infants and Toddlers is a very simple book, but this is their favorite book for me to read. I read a lot of, uh, always during a snack time, I will always read or, you know, do whatever we're going to do literacy-wise. This is a fun one at snack time because they love to feed their food to the 
Finish the oh. rest of the yeah, no, story. Again, it's about being being interactive with literature. Yeah, of course. So because everything's you read physical. This whole book? No, just read a yeah. Read your favorite book to kids. Can we play? Can we play as a fish? I'm much too big, says the whale. <laughs> Silly, just reading to a dog and a cat. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Can we play as a fish? I'm much too snappy, says the crab. And then we, the crab goes down to snap everybody's snack. Because that's what they love to do. Can we play as a fish? This is a favorite. I'm much too wriggly, says the octopus. Now we all know this is a very scary page because it's a shark. Can we play as the fish? I'm much too scary, says the shark. And then everyone screams. <laughs> Can we play as the fish? Yes, come and play, they all replied. Splash, splash, splash. <laughs> and that is our favorite snack time story. Yeah.